hello all and welcome to my youtube channel so today in this particular video we are going to talk about a particular model which help us to extract the information from the documents whether it's a pdf document or an image document and we are going to see how we can fine tune this uh, model on our own annotated data set right so let us start so this model is called LILT model which is language independent layout transform model so recently there have been a lot of progress in document AI industry where uh, people have been developing lot of, lot of models to extract the information from uh, from documents uh, like PDF document, finance documents, which has these kind of documents and uh, we want to extract some entities or uh, the relative information from the particular PDF structure documents, right? So there have been a lot of uh, uh, models have been available like layout LM models. Uh, there are different versions of layout LM models like layout LM version 1, layout LM version 2 and 3. So uh, there has been a issue with respect to layout LM model as well. Like there has been licensing issue with respect to layout LM version 2 and layout LM version 3. That means you cannot use layout LM version 2 and layout LM version 3 for your commercial purpose. But you can use it for your education purpose, right? But uh, so that's a problem with uh, layout LM models. Like you can only use layout LM version 1 for your particular task for your commercial use. So coming to that point wh wh what i'm trying to say here is lilt is a uh, different model compared to L uh, layout lm model but it follows the similar uh, idea what layout lm has been doing uh, till now and this this model can be used for uh, uh, commercial purpose and also the main idea around this lilt model is which is uh, which make it very useful is is language independent so layout lm model was just trained on uh, just can be trained on a single language like english or any of the language but it has been particularly trained on uh, english language documents but this uh, lilt model is language independent model and that means it can be used for uh, just just for just not for english language it can be used for many other languages that means it's a multilingual or monolingual model that i should say so this is the issue that uh, LILT model is, is, is able to uh, help and that means you can use this model to fine tune it on, on any kind of language data whether it will be a Spanish data or, or um, any kind of uh, Korean documents or Chinese document. So if you have that kind of uh, ab ability to train such kind of layout LM models then it will be very helpful right so this this lilt model help you to do that and you can leverage this model for your multilingual uh, image do image documents and then you can extract the information so this is a, this is a pre pretty much brief in information that i can give uh, for more information you can just go uh, go through this particular pdf uh, of the paper uh, lilt paper and then you can uh, understand well how they are able to do this so basically uh, if you see their architecture here the, the flow remains the same as it is like how layout lm uh, works uh, only thing is the text encoder uh, it's getting replaced here with the respective uh, uh, language that is being used right so let's suppose you have this particular image which is written in spanish and then you want to extract the information from this using a uh, like you want to extract the information from this using a spanish encoder right so you have, what you have to do is you have to take up this image and then you have to pass it into the OCR engine to extract the information as well as the uh, OCR information plus the uh, the region information where the text is being positioned in this particular image. And then you're going to fast forward this particular uh, OCR, uh, OCR text into the uh, text encoder model. Like it may be uh, any kind of bird trained model which is trained specifically for Spanish. And then you can pass that particular OCR engines to that particular BERT model, which has been trained on Spanish. And then you can use this uh, position uh, of this particular text information to the uh, layout information flow model. And then you can add up these two information and train a uh, model, which is trained on uh, pre-training objectives like uh, like masked visual learning model, or uh, there are different uh, pre-training objectives. Right? So, so this is what uh, it generally help us to uh, bring up the multilingual part into into the uh, layout models right so this lilt model help us to achieve that perspective and it is fairly able it is fairly able to perform or perform the layout model 
uh, in very well uh, numbers right so if i go scroll down and if you want to see the numbers how, how much it is able to outperform layout lm version 2 and other models are available so if you see here is a lilt model and if you if you can see this F, f1 score and precision recall on the data set that it has been trained so you can see it has been trained on funds sd data set and it is basically trained on the receipt data set so and these all of these are models are being uh, compared once uh, they are trained on the funds data set right so uh, you can see that it is it is fairly able to perform better than layout lm version 2 it's it's performing better at precision and even the recall right even you can see uh dog former models uh it is it is able to outperform these models as well so these are the types of uh, uh models that are available right these are different type of models that are available for uh document understanding and this is one more model that you can use it for your own purpose and with that perspective you can use this model and it's it's a uh, you can use it for your commercial purpose because it doesn't have any license issues so maybe you can switch from layout lm models to lilt model for better performance and get a multilingual ability if you if you have that uh objectives to be done so you can use this lilt model for your uh purpose right so that was a brief introduction that i can provide you with this if you want to detail uh part of this like how the functioning and what they have used uh, for this particular model training you can just go through this particular paper and at ilt and it's a very good paper that you can understand the world of document ai to right so this is what i can refer you uh to to go through an ilt paper right and they have also provided a uh, api to hugging phase so if you want to go into the hugging, hugging phase and then you can get uh and paper and, and also an implementation of pretend model that is available over there in transformers so you can go and check out this particular link uh and you can get an understanding how it has been implemented uh in the hugging phase and they also have a uh, uh, github repository where they have official implementations of this particular rlt model so you can go and scroll up this particular github page and you can get a better understanding of this right and i've also made a lot of videos on uh, uh, PDF and image document understanding. So you can go over my YouTube channel and can, you can search for this particular playlist information extraction from PDF and image documents. You can find a lot of videos I have made on, on extracting the information of PDF and images, whether it's, it's a tabular data or it's a, uh, it's a, it's a layout LM model or any kind of uh, image classification that you want to do. So a lot of information, a lot of videos I've made over this particular document. AI. So you can just go and watch watch this particular uh, playlist I, I can provide this particular playlist in the i button at the top so now let's jump to the fine tuning of lilt model like how we can use this lilt model for our training right so first step of any of the uh, fine tuning part is to to take up the data whatever you have and annotate it right so for annotation uh, i use ubi AI tool this tool is very good for uh, extracting or working with any kind of document uh, annotations so whether it's a pdf whether it's a image document and you want to extract all any kind of information whether it's a, any other information that you want to extract from the pdf or from a, any image document or even if you want to do a relationship extractions or even if you want to do a layout lm training model or you want to do an nilt model so this model this particular tool will help you to to get all those kind of uh, uh, hiccups that are generally there in in an annotation process of a document uh, so you can use this uh, ubi tool for th those purpose and it's a very feasible uh, tool that you can use for your pur purpose and then it will help you to uh, train and train the model very well right so for training such kind of huge models uh, if you're training layout lm model or any kind of uh, document models document AI models then we need the right tools to be there right so so for, so for that ubi ai tool help you a lot and then you can use this uh, this tool for your own purpose and then uh, and once the annotation is done then you can ex export this annotation to any kind of format uh, to train a model like if you want to uh, like if you want to train a spacey model then you can use this annotation a single time of annotation to train all such kind of different models for different purpose right so this is the feasibility that ubi tool provide, provides and if you want to go into more depth of this ubi tool i have prepared a video on my channel uh, in detail so you can go over there on my youtube channel you can search for this particular uh, caption and you can 
get the uh, details of uh, annotations like how it is being done at UBI tool and then you can uh, watch that particular video and then you can start annotating the uh, documents uh, over the UBI tool right so now let's start with uh, the annotation so already there has been a lot of documents that has been annotated like 250 documents that, that has been annotated on the right you can see um, there's a invoice and there has been an annotated already so i'm just going to export this uh, particular uh, 250 documents annotated documents uh, into the required format for LILT or layout LM model. So if you're using LILT model or layout LM model, there the export format remains the same. So when you when you when you click on this particular export button, you can see a lot of formats available. So you can train such kind of models with all this export. So right now I'm going to use OCR format, and then you're gonna click on this OCR process form. And then it then it will start downloading the. Uh, annotations in the required format that is needed for the LLT model training right so once that is downloaded uh, it will download a file in the form of zip so you can see this is a zip file and I'm going to extract this zip file into a folder so once you unzip those folders you can see an, another folder inside that particular folder and then you're gonna find uh, four important files in it right so these are four important files that are very important that that will help you to pre-process your uh, annotations that are present in all these uh, PDF do or documents or in images, right? So uh, let me open and show it up to you. What are these uh, documents has it? So if you see this particular uh, PDF or this particular text file has uh, each word with respect to the bonding box information. So it is nothing but a, the east word in a particular document and its uh, positional information in that particular document so this is this is how it has been uh, uh, exported into this, into this particular file and it has all the information for each of the files or each of the images with the text and its respective position over the images right and then you have next file that has each word and the ner information for those each word of each files so that's how uh, the information is, is there in the second folder second text file and then the third file has all the different type of labels that are you that you have provided over the over the particular uh, image while annotating right so these are the uh, labels that has been created by the model and the next image uh, or the next uh, text file has all the information that has been collaborated into one file that is uh, that what is this particular uh, word and then its positional information and the, what is the uh, size of that particular image and then what is the uh, path of that particular image present in the particular folder and likewise for other uh, text so this is how the information is being encoded and extracted from the annotations uh, from ubi tool and then i'm going to use this file zip file that i downloaded from the uh, uh, ubi tool and i'm going to use this annotation file for my training of lilt model so let's see how how ubi tool help us to make this uh, fine tuning of lilt model very easy so let me connect to the uh, GPU server over the collab and then we can start uh, using the file that I have uh, downloaded from the uh, UBI tool, right? So I have placed my file over there on my Google Drive. So I'm going to mount this, uh, uh, I'm going to mount my Google Drive over this particular collab. And then I'm going to install these dependencies that are required for, for training up my model. Like I'm going to install Tesseract OCR and PyTesseract and Transformers and all other dependencies for training my LLT model. And then once uh, the installations are done, I'm going to unzip my annotated files uh, that have downloaded from the uh, UBI tool, right? So this is the file that I've downloaded and placed on the Google Drive. So I'm going to unzip those files and bring it over here into the collab environment. So let me just run this particular cell so that it will just just, just pick up those uh, uh, files from my Google Drive and it will unzip it here in the uh, collab environment, right? So if you, if you see this data folder, it will have all those files that I just recently, recently showed you to you, right? So now let's come back to the next step. So the next step is to uh, use those uh, annotation files that I just showed you and pre-process it, right? So uh, for that, I am just going to pass up this particular uh, uh, set of uh, variables. Like uh, uh, what I'm going to do is essentially is I'm going to pre-process these files, whatever that I have shown it over here, uh, the annotated files, and then I'm going to save 
into a train and test files right so for that i'm going to provide the test size uh, number like how much test size i have to provide out of those and then we are going to save those uh, train and test files right so i have to provide the folders uh, folder path that's what i am going to uh, go to specify it here as an argument and then these are the steps that you can uh, take up and uh, pre process this particular uh, particular annotation files and pre process it according to the requirement and then save it in a in a hugging face dataset format and these are the steps that you can look up into it and then uh, essentially you can take up this uh, this particular uh, uh, code and you can run it and you can understand the purpose uh, what i'm trying to explain because if i start if i start explaining explaining this particular code it, it would take a lot of time to uh, explain these sort of things so but you can go and execute this code and you can understand very easily like what i'm trying to explain so essentially what it will do is it will just take up this particular annotation file that i showed it to you and then it will convert into the train and test folders uh in the required format of hugging face and then uh we can use that train and test folders that is being created and then we can use that uh train test file for our training of an entity so this is what it will do and let us run this particular preprocess file and then once it is created we can use this preprocess file to uh, which specify the test size and then output path where you're going to save this train and test and then we are going to run this particular uh code right so let's wait for it to complete and then uh, we are going to use that a train and test file uh, for our training of a model okay so you can see uh, the the process has been completed now let's see what is the output of this particular uh, run so if you see over here you can see there is one folder there are actually there are two folders that has been created one is eval split and there is one train split and there is a raw data folder that has been created so eval split folder you can see there has been a a folder uh, or there's a file that is called dataset dot, dot arrow which is the uh, format that a dataset generally hugging face accept so this is a train this is a test file you can see and in the train split folder you can see the train file and then in the raw underscore data you can see train and test again file uh, so these are the file that has not been processed or that has not been uh, uh, encoded in the right format it's just a raw file uh, that has not been processed right so this is the raw data and this is the process data in a train and test so we want to use this train and test file that is evolve split and train split for our uh, training of the model that is process file right so uh, we have this files ready now we going to use this folders for the training of or fine tuning of our model so let us import some of the uh, libraries that are required for training of the model so if you see i am going to use the transformer models uh, particularly for the training and uh, also the i'm going to use layout element version 3 token classify uh, token classification and also an auto processor and that means i'm going to use the layout element version 3 processor uh, for processing out the features of the particular images so it's a simple thing uh, if you want to know more about these things how this process works you can just go and watch my layout element video so i have explained in detail uh, like how these things works and then you can use this uh, a transformers uh, utilities function and then import torch right so i'm going to use this uh, imports and then i'm going to load up uh, the train and test files from uh, from the disk that i just created so you can see train and test split uh, folders has been initiated and i'm going to load up this train and test data and then i'm also going to load up our train and test folders uh, from the raw data folders right so let me just import it and then we can see uh, there are few things that are available here uh in the raw data set if you see there are id tokens box nr so these are information that are being there in the uh, train raw folder so now let's just visualize the images that we are going to use so let's just run this particular cell and we're going to see uh the visualization of our images that we are going to use so these are the invoices images so these are type of invoices images that we are going to use for our training and then once uh, this is done then we are going to take up all the labels that are available the distinct labels that are available in our data set and then we are trying to convert those labels into the integers like that we are trying to encode those labels into the numbers right so and that's what we are trying to do it over here so we are going to iterate each each of the labels here and then we are going to save those uh, labels and encoded labels into the numbers in the dictionary right so this is what we are going to do it over here and then once we are done we are going to use or download the model uh from the uh, 
hugging phase. So we are going to use from transformer a lit LILT uh, model for token classification. From here, we're going to download this model, which is Roberta based model. And if you see this, it's a Roberta English based model. So I'm I'm specifically training for the uh, for the English language. But if you want to train it for uh, any other language like Spanish or uh, Korean, so you want to bring up a uh, model ID for that particular model over here, and then and then you can download this model over from from this particular hugging face, right? So let me just run this, and it will download the model, and then once the model is being downloaded, and then you can uh, uh, just start uh, the training. But before before starting the training, you have to initiate the uh, matrix uh, for for particular uh, evaluation of the particular model right so you have to create a matrix so this is a matrix that you can use it for for your training of uh, for for your training or evaluation of your particular LILT model so i'm just going to run this particular cell and then we can initiate the training part of the LILT model so if you see i'm going to provide some of the uh, training arguments uh, that are required for training a particular model so I'm going to import uh, uh, trainers and trainer arguments from transformers. So this is a usual way of training the model from transformers. And then I'm going to provide some information like uh, uh, how many epochs I need to train, like if it is a 50, 50 epochs or 10 epochs, and then how many devices, how many batch size per device uh, you want to uh, uh, give. So I'm going to provide four, four, four or six, uh, let, let me say that it's a six, uh, uh, batches I'm going to provide and then what is the learning rate and then uh, you have to take up this uh, this particular uh, specification of the arguments into the training arguments and then you have to provide all these training arguments required here and then you can uh, and then you can start with the uh, training of the uh, model uh, with the trainer argument right with the trainer uh, uh, API so with the trainer API you have to specify the models uh, so initially we downloaded the model right at the top so you have to specify the model and then you have to specify the training arguments that you have created here and then you have to specify the training data set and the evaluator data set and then data collector and then compute matrix so matrix that we have provided here right so here in the section so you have to provide that matrix and then the trainer object is being initiated so once this trainer argument is initiated we're going to start the training of this model by specifying the training method over the trainer object so we're going to run this and it will run for uh, uh, like how many epochs like we have specified like 50 epochs right so we're gonna run for 50 epochs with batch size 6 and we're gonna take 18 minutes to uh, train this particular model you can see the process has been started and you can see the number of examples are 171 number of epochs are 50 and uh, batch size and then optimization so there and how many how many total parameters are being uh, trained over here so this is the thing that you can uh, see very very specifically uh, when you train it using the hugging face model and uh, it will take around uh, 18 minutes to train this particular model for 50 epochs and let's just wait for this model to get trained and then once uh, this training is done we are will back with uh, the train model and then we are going to see how we can save the model and then how we can, how, how we're going to use this model to uh, inference it out on the new uh, uh, image document right so let us wait for it to get it trained right Okay, so you can see the training has been completed and you can see the all the losses that has been uh, going down as the training has been uh, uh, progressing. So uh, you can see there has been a reduction in the loss and uh, once this uh, training is completed, you can see the matrix uh, available over here like what is the training loss and how many epochs and what is the uh, time it took to train this particular and what are the samples number of times so this is the information that you can uh, check it once the training has been completed now let's evaluate this trained model right so e there is a function called dot evaluate in the trainer so you can just run this and you can get the, uh, the you can get the uh, evaluation matrix that you printed and you can see that evaluation loss is 0.446 and then evaluation precision is 0.6 and then evaluation result is 0 0.69 and then f1 score is 0 0.64 evaluation accuracy is 94 
so this is the evaluation uh, uh, that you can you can you can check it uh, by using trainer.evaluate so this evaluate function will help you to uh, actually evaluate it on the test data set that we just prepared right so it has used that test data set and it has evaluated this result and uh, share it with you so eventually you can uh, in increase this performance by adding more data set or more images of another data set and then you can train it for more number of epochs and that will help you to obviously increase this accuracy of this particular model but for this demonstration we have just used the uh, files uh, the limited files for the training and then you can use this uh, model for your uh, uh, use cases right so this is how you can use it and evaluate it now let's just, let's just save this particular model uh, by using lit model uh, folder so trainer dot save model will help you to save this uh, train model over the path specified so you can see in the path uh, folder you can see there are three two files that are being uh, saved you can see the config.json and pytorch model.bin if you want to see here you can see there's a lit model folder available you can see there are three files that are being saved once you start saving this particular model right and then once uh, the tra uh, train model has been saved now you want to inference out right so again for inferencing what you have to do is you have to take up an image and then you have to pre-process the same image into the into the right format that is required for this this particular lilt model right so this is what you are going to do do it over here so this particular uh, cell will take the uh, model that will load that uh, already trained model you can see we are taking the uh, train model that, that we have just trained it and then we are going to use uh, the feature extractor or the processor that uh, that we have already applied here over in the pre-processing file that we just showed it over above right and then uh, we are going to further process the files and then we are going to uh, provide the labels uh, label color and then we are going to uh, draw the uh, bounding boxes over the printed uh, printed object right so this is the file this is the cell that will help you to do that and then this final uh, inference function that will help you to load up the model and load up the processing files that you have just prepared and then uh, it will output the uh, prediction with the label and read over the image so we just run this particular cell and let us see the uh, information and like how it is being printed away right so now let's just test out our trained model on the test images so i have few test images available on on the collab so i'm going to use that as an as an input to the trained model so uh, let's just print out those test images uh, so this is uh, one of the images that i'm going to use it uh, for testing out the train model so i'm going to pass this image into the uh, run underscore inference uh, uh, function to print the result and let's let's see how the results comes out and uh, uh, we'll we'll see the predicted outputs over the images so uh, as you can see it has it has done pretty much good job in understanding and extracting the output from the uh, from the particular invoice images so you can see east repair inc is a is a seller and the model is able to identify this as a seller and then you can also see uh, invoice date is also being identified properly you can see the date has been identified and the invoice id ids has been identified as a date id and then you can also see uh, invoice uh, name has been also identified total amount has also been identified properly over here uh, so the model is doing pretty much good here and it is able to identify the and identify the important entities that we're trying to extract let's just visualize the result on another test image so let me just take up another test image and let's try it on a different one so let me just copy it and paste the path and then uh, this is the image that we we just visualized right so let's pass this to the run underscore inference function and let's see how the things uh, the model is able to capture so model here is able to capture the seller name the invoice number and the total amount right and so these are these are the things that it is able to identify it, it missed out on the invoice number so this this is what it is like the model is able to do and able to capture some of the things but we should also keep in mind that uh, the training has been done on very small set of data and we can further improve this training of our model and improve the performance of our model and then later uh, we can improve uh, uh, hyperparameters to get more uh, good predictions out of this particular model so this was just an example that that can help you to understand the 
feasibility and the performance of an ILT model. And then later you can improve the performance by training it for more epochs and and adding up of more samples to the model right so this is all about this particular video and if you want to annotate your image documents or pdf documents you can definitely uh, check out ubi tool these are very uh, good uh, tools that are available in the uh, internet or in the market right now and you can use it for your own purpose uh, these these tools help you to improve the performance of your model as well as the uh, it, it, it can help you to ease the process of your uh, annotation right so this is all about this particular video i hope you enjoyed this particular tutorial if you like my content do subscribe my channel thank you